An omni wheel is typically a wheel which has lots of small wheels around its circumference. I've built quite a lot of omnidirectional robots and vehicles, including a promo for Lego which displayed a Lego set, a robot which used an innovative ball shaped wheel design, and a bike robot which used one omni wheel which it balanced on and used to steer sideways. I also built an active omni wheel where the small wheels were driven with another motor, and I made a one wheel balancing robot with it, although typically the small wheels on omni wheels are passive. Omni wheels you can buy are not normally that cheap, especially the larger ones. I've seen some forklift trucks with mechanum wheels which have slanted wheels around their circumference, but I'm imagining that those are fairly costly. I really want to get hold of a large omni wheel strong enough for me to ride on, and I'll talk more about what I'm planning to do with it at the end of the video. So for now, it looks like I'll have to design and build one. One of the issues I've come across with making my own omni wheels is that due to the small wheels facing outward, this leaves a pinch point where the hub design needs to get quite thin to fit between the wheels. So to make sure that my hub is strong enough in this design, I'm going to make the spokes out of steel. I needed 6mm slots in my hub and I only have wood bits which are imperial and that's a quarter inch which is too big so I had to use an HSS cutter to cut these and that's why the parts are slightly tatty. I needed two of those hubs so we can hold the spokes in the middle of them and I also needed another disc and another ring so all of those parts were cut out on the CNC and that leaves me the two hubs which I've cleaned up now and the ring and the other disc. It's time to make the spokes, which are made of 6mm thick steel, which of course will fit into those 6mm slots that I cut into the plywood. So I'm just cutting those up with an angle grinder because I don't have a horizontal band saw yet, but I'll probably get a hold of one in the future. So I drilled the holes out to first a 4mm and then to an 8mm, and yes I should probably use a drill press for this, but again that's something I need to acquire because the one I've had in my shed for a couple of years seems to have stopped working. I drilled those holes as close as I can to the end and we'll find out why that is in a minute. I need to weld to these so I cleaned up the ends with a flapper disc in an angle grinder on both sides and both ends of the piece. And I also cut a number of smaller tabs, well actually 16 to match all of the spokes, and those get mounted up and welded to the end so that we get a nice T piece to fit in that T shaped slot. There are 16 wheels around the circumference of my wheel and therefore there's 16 spokes so I had to repeat this process 16 times. So now I've got 16 of those with their 16 T pieces on and those of course fit into the hub of the wheel. So there's 16 there and 16 spaces for my 16 wheels. Now I've got two of those wooden hubs and of course those mount face to face and the whole thing's bolted together with some 6mm bolts and lock nuts. So that should hold together nicely and the T pieces will stop the spokes pulling in or out. Now we need some axles and I'm using 8mm studding and the reason for that is that my wheels are actually 72mm diameter longboard wheels and these come with 8mm internal diameter bearings in them and so using studding and nuts done up against each other means it actually makes that axle slightly thicker. But before we carry on with that it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor which is Onshape. Onshape is a cloud-native CAD and PDM platform built for business. Companies like Formlabs and Trek use Onshape to design their products. Onshape is browser-based, so it's accessible across all operating systems and works like Google Docs. So an Onshape document is a single source of truth for your design data. Onshape is great for working with teams using hybrid or remote working. You can collaborate with team members at the same time on the same document across the world. Data management is built into Onshape, there's no need for file management on your local hard drive. Onshape uses a GitHub inspired version and branch and merge model for fearless design experimentation. 
Onshape has industry-leading manufacturing-specific features for sheet metal and frame-based design, as well as surfacing configurations and detailed drawings. Because it's browser and cloud-based, with Onshape you no longer need an expensive workstation. All of the heavy lifting is done in the cloud, so things like rendering and creating large assemblies can be done on inexpensive devices. And unlike any other CAD platform, Onshape ships new releases to the product every three weeks to add new features and functionality. One of the best ways to support this channel is to support my sponsors. Your business can try Onshape for free at onshape.pro slash James Bruton, or click the link in the video description. Right, let's try and get these wheels on. So those need to be welded on all the way around into those holes, and I've made the axles exactly the right length so they both sit into one hole where they meet in the middle. Now I've got to be pretty careful here not to melt the wheels, which are of course made of a sort of soft plasticky rubber material, and there's just enough space in there to get the TIG torch in, and that's why I drilled those holes really close to the end of the steel spokes. I did manage to singe the wheels a couple of times and it leaves a kind of black residue but that seems to just wipe off quite easily and leave the wheel nice and clean again. So actually I'm not too unhappy of how this has gone, it seems to have worked out okay. I am welding stainless steel to mild steel and I'm using normal mild steel TIG rods but they don't seem to have come out too badly although they could be cleaner if I'd done the whole thing in stainless steel of course. So we're about halfway done here, you can see a couple of black soot marks on some of those wheels that need cleaning up. And here we are with the very last wheel, so that makes 16 little wheels around the circumference of my Omni wheel. So here it all is in one piece, so that's looking pretty good to me. And I've also got those discs which sit on top, and those are there to hold a pulley so that we can drive the whole thing. Well, it wouldn't be one of my videos without a 3D printing segment with the 3D printing music that everyone seems to like so much. So as always, thanks to my 3D printing sponsor, which is Lolzbot, for sponsoring the channel with 3D printers, and thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects. So check out my channel for more 3D printed projects and check out 3dfuel.com. So that pulley is glued onto the wooden disc so we can drive it and the other parts I printed were little caps to cover all of my dodgy welds. I've mounted a 20mm bearing in a bearing block and obviously you can see I've painted all the wood green to match as well. It's currently running on a 20mm diameter piece of bright steel bar which tends to be toleranced quite well so that fits nicely in the bearings and that looks pretty good. But what am I going to use it for? So you may remember that Colin Furs left a bicycle on my driveway and it was a funny bike with a funny wheel which was made as part of the Maker's Secret Santa. So I asked Colin if I could reuse the back end of the bike to put this wheel on and he said, sure go for it, is it a self-balanced bike? Yes it is a self-balanced bike Colin Furs and what we're going to do is put this on the front of a bike so it goes backwards and forwards this way and then it rotates this way so the front of the bike can go sideways and I can spin around on the spot. And that's going to involve modifying the front forks of the bike so that we can get this axle on at 90 degrees. And of course I did a project similar to this which I showed at the start of the video which was a little version, it had no actual steering apart from the Omni wheel that went sideways so it could steer and it could turn on the spot. So it's probably going to look a bit like this when it's done with the bike facing the normal way and the wheel on a 90 degrees so it makes a T-shape. We've got quite a few challenges to overcome, mainly mounting the wheel but also putting a drive system in, probably a brushless motor with a two-stage belt reduction so that we've got enough torque and we need to make it auto balance. I'll be able to sort of ride along normally, steering like a normal bike, then stop on the spot with the one brake that we've still got on the back wheel, flick a switch on the handlebars and then it will go into auto balancing mode so we can spin around on the spot all being well. So there's quite a lot of electronics there to do as well as the mechanics. If you want to see it working, it's hopefully coming up in the next video. So don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you liked it. And I'm actually going to publish all of this as open source as well if you want to have a go at building your own. So if you want to support me through Patreon, then you can. And those links are in the description to this video. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early, including sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be part of that discussion. All right, that's all for now.